In this video, I'm gonna share six tools that have been absolute game changers for us. These tools have helped us to become more efficient, improved our quality, and allow us to achieve a fit and finish that's second to none. The three vans behind me are the 16th, 17th, and 18th vans that I built together with two of my sons. My first two vans I built in my driveway, mostly with tools that I already had on hand. But what a difference these have made. And at the end of this video, I'll share with you a bonus tool that's small enough to fit my pocket. I carry it with me every day when I'm in the shop, use it all the time, and cost less than $50. So if you're doing a conversion or upgrade on a van, truck, or RV, this video is definitely for you. So let's get into it. So the first three tools I'm gonna to talk about are all woodworking tools. Now these are all made by FezTool, and if you know anything about tools, you know FezTool tools are pretty expensive. So when we're buying tools for our shop that we're using every day, and we're gonna use them long-term, we definitely buy the best. I have a little saying that I use all the time, and that is the bitterness of poor quality remains long after the sweetness of a good deal is forgotten. That's definitely true with tools. However, there are some alternatives for these that are less expensive, that really, if you're just doing one van, um, will work fine. Another thing about buying quality tools is that if you're buying them for a van, you can use them and then you can sell them. And if they're good quality, you're probably gonna be able to sell them for around half of what you paid for them. So you can recoup a lot of that money after you're finished with your van. And who knows, you might decide to go into the van building business like I did, and then these tools are gonna to be really valuable and you'll be using them every day. So let's talk about the track saw first. A track saw obviously needs a track. And uh, it slides on this track and the, the cut is right along this edge. And you just lower this down and run it along. So it's fast, it's easy, it's really nice for big sheets of plywood. Like if you're starting with a four by eight sheet of plywood, that's hard to run through a table saw. And if you're just using like a circular saw, it's hard to get straight lines. But with this, you can lay it across. This is 55 inches wide. And so you can run it and cross cut your plywood really quickly to break it down into smaller pieces. So what I found is a track saw really can pretty much replace a table saw uh, in a van. What most people do is they buy an inexpensive table saw um, and there are good, decent ones out there, Rigid, DeWalt, um, Makita, they all make small table saws for a few hundred dollars. But the thing is, this will do everything those will do. If you're getting into really fine cabinetry and other woodworking, it's, it's nice to have a table saw. But really, I would say, unless you're gonna buy a, a good table saw for over a thousand dollars, this track saw will do pretty much everything that that will do. Now, one thing you do a lot in vans is cut tapers because nothing's squa straight or square. And it's really hard to cut a taper on a table saw where you have to make a jig so that you can run um, it through the piece through at an angle. And it's, it's kind of a hassle. And I did that on my first van. I had a small table saw and I would have to make jigs to taper things. With a track saw, it is so easy to cut a taper. Let's just say I was cutting this piece and I needed to cut a taper on it. Let's say that it was gonna start right at this corner, but I needed to bring it in, let's say an inch. And let's say I measured an inch right there. So all I have to do is just lay my piece down, set my track on top, line the edges up with that corner and with that mark that I made an inch in, set it on there and just run it through and it's gonna cut a perfect taper. It's that simple. So that's the track saw, highly recommended. So next up is the orbital sander. These are so important to have. You're gonna do a lot of sanding in a van and it's gonna save you a lot of time and effort and really even injury um, by having a good orbital sander. I had a DeWalt um, orbital sander before this and if I had to sand very much, after I did it, my wrists and elbows would just ache. Um, it would cause like tendonitis, especially in my elbow. I had I have tennis elbow anyway, and it would aggravate it and irritate it and absolutely drive me crazy. This Festool is so much less vibration in the handle and just the ergonomics of it make it so easy to sand. It really, really is, in my opinion, worth spending a little bit of extra money to get the Festool. And again, if you want, you can sell it after you're done and probably get at least half of your money back. Um, but again, there's lots of good orbital sanders out there. 
The reason an orbital sander is so important is it not only vibrates, but this disc slowly turns. And what it does, it avoids swirl marks, gives you a very even finish on your sanding. And this is important, especially when you're painting wood, because you wanna have a really good base, a good prep before you put down your paint. So that too is highly recommended. So next up is the domino joiner. Um, again, you could use a biscuit joiner, um, but what this allows us to do is connect pieces using these little dominoes, and, um, and this, this bores a little groove in the piece of wood so that we can fit the two pieces together with glue. So when you use these, you really don't even need to use any screws or nails. You can just glue these in, and these are gonna give you more strength than you'll ever need. Now, the nice thing about dominoes is they are stronger than, um, a bisc than biscuits. A biscuit joiner is really more for alignment, whereas the domino joiner is good for alignment, but also adds strength. So let's just say that I was making some a window trim to go around one of the windows in the van, and I wanted these to be connected like this, okay? So here's how you do that with the domino joiner. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put these together where I want them and I make a couple little marks and that's where I'm going to want my dominoes to be. I'm going to use two of them and then I'm just going to bore two holes where I made those pencil marks. So you can see that just bored two little grooves in there that now this domino will fit into. Okay. Now I match it up and I just am gonna do the same thing on the two lines that I made. Now I've got two holes in this one and all I'm gonna do is match these up and you can see they perfectly match up. No hole, no pocket holes, no screws, no nails. All I gotta do is glue those together, clamp them for a short time, and that thing's not going anywhere. This is how we make all of the trim in our vans. It's how we make cabinetry when we're doing it out of wood. The domino joiner is awesome, and you can use it in a lot of different ways, and highly recommend it, although it is pretty pricey. I wanted to jump in really quick and share something with you that Lisa and I are passionate about. We love cooking and creating in the kitchen, whether we're at home or cooking in a tiny van kitchen. And one of our favorite hacks is using Thrive freeze-dried foods. Why freeze-dried? Because it's lightweight, requires no refrigerator, and lasts for up to 25 years. With fruits, veggies, meats, and dairy products, Thrive's got you covered. Whether you want healthy ingredients for quick and easy meals, shelf-stable meals for when you are on the road, or you want to be more prepared in case of emergencies, Thrive could be your answer. Check out the link below for more info. And now back to the video. Now that we've gone through the woodworking tools, let's go to the painting. So in order to achieve a really good finish in a van, you really have got to spray on your paint. Now with really good technique, you can get a pretty good finish on um, cabinetry using a roller, but it's a lot trickier and you have to use the right paint. If you really want a good finish, then a sprayer is the way to go. Sprayer is also so much faster for painting. Now I've been through a lot of sprayers trying to find the perfect one for van builds. So I started out with a big airless sprayer made by Graco, but the kind big thing about this tall where the tube goes into the bucket of paint and it's got a 25 foot hose. But what I found on that is it was just too big and powerful. And then also it wasted a lot of paint because um, pump and the hose used up like maybe a quarter of the gallon just to get it all in there. And then when you finished, you had to get all that paint out and it was, the cleanup was a hassle. So I really recommend against using one of those bigger airless sprayers. Then I got a small handheld held, uh, Graco sprayer. I think they call it the True Coat. And that works okay for bigger jobs where you're putting a lot of paint down. Like if you were painting a fence or the side of your house or walls or ceiling or something like that in your house, that's great. But if you're doing fine finishes on cabinetry, you really wanna put down a much thinner coat and do several coats of it. 
So next I went to a HVLP sprayer. And again, I went with the Graco, about a $2,000 sprayer. Works really well, um, but it's a little bit more finicky. It works better on clear finishes like polyurethane or lacquers or things like that. Not quite as well with thicker latex paints. So I used that for a couple of years and it worked well. Um, but then Graco just came out with this little guy called the Quick Shot. And I absolutely love this sprayer. It's smaller, it holds about a quart in this container. It runs off of DeWalt batteries that come. Um, and this battery typically will last me about a day. Um, and so, so the batteries are awesome. It's small, it's easy to carry. And then it has a short little hose and a smaller pump. And so it doesn't take nearly as much paint. I, I think it's like a half a cup to get everything primed and everything to have the paint start, start coming out. And when you go to clean up, same thing. There's just not very much paint left in the system that you flush out and clean it. So cleanup is really quick. Just rinse everything out, run some clear water through it, and then you're good to go. But with a paint sprayer like this, you can pretty much spray a almost factory finish. So with the van, you're painting a lot of small pieces and you're starting and stopping. And you know, typically I'm, I'm doing all my, my drawer faces and my door cabinet doors and things like that. And I can lay all those out and spray them in a matter of five or 10 minutes. And then I can just turn this little um, tip sideways, which won't let any air in. And then it has this little cap on the top. You close that tap off, cap off, and now this thing's sealed and I can leave it. I've left it over the weekend, come back in, turn this and started spraying again. And there's no clogs, no, no anything. It works great. So it's really nice when you're stopping and starting to not have to clean up. It can really say add up if you're doing a lot of painting in saving on the rollers and brushes and trays and things like that that you need when you're doing it that way. You can achieve pretty much a factory finish on your cabinetry if you use the right paint. And it's just awesome, highly recommended. Now the next tool that I wish I had had or even known about when I built my first couple of vans is a digital level. These things are so nice to have in a van. And the reason for that is nothing is square or level in a van. So you can't use a tr traditional level to find horizontal or vertical planes. This makes it really difficult sometimes to make your cabinetry square or your flooring or whatever it might be to make that really straight and square. So what I've done is I set this table up on blocks so that it's not level. And if I look at this level, the bubble is over this way. So it's de the table is definitely not level. This is what you're gonna get in a lot of times in a van. And so it's really hard to find level um, in a van. But what you can do with the digital level is you can just set it down and hit reset. Now that shows zero. So even though it's not level, I'm calling this my new level. And so as long as if my, let's just say my floor was there and now I have that marked as level, I can put this on anything else like a, a cabinet or my uppers or any place else in the van to make sure that those are parallel to the floor which is really what you want. You can also check to make sure things are vertical now because I have this as my zero. If I set this, it should read 90 degrees. And if it reads 90 degrees, then I know that I'm perpendicular to the floor. So a digital level is a really nice thing to have. And I'll link to the digital level that we like as well as all the other products that I'm talking about in this video down in the description. Now, the next tool that I really, really wish I'd had on my first van build was this PEX expansion tool. This thing is absolutely awesome. Now, on my first van, I did use PEX, but I was using a crimp tool like this. And the tough thing about this is sometimes you've really got to get down. You're working in a very small area and have to get that crimper down into a really small area. And then there's a little uh, ring that slides over your fitting. And then you've got to have that ring position just right and crimp it just right. And if it, if it doesn't crimp perfectly um, straight, if it gets kinked a little bit or it slid slides a little bit, um, then it, you don't get a good uh, connection and you can have a leak. And so that's how I did my first van. And it honestly was a pain in the butt. On my second van, I decided to buy this. Now this expansion tool, again, is not cheap. 
Uh, Milwaukee makes some. I think DeWalt makes one. Uh, the Milwaukee is kind of the go-to um, for um, people in the plumbing trades. And this is another tool that if you buy this, you could probably sell this for at least half of what you paid for it when you're done with the van. So here's how you would make a connection, which is really nice. So they have these little um, sleeves that just slide over the end of what you're gonna connect to. So I've got those um, sleeves, the expansion sleeves on that. And I'm gonna connect these two with an elbow. So let's just say that um, this was already in the van, okay? I can, all I've gotta do is put this in and I just press it and I usually do about seven clicks. Okay, and then all I'm gonna do, and I got plenty of time to do this, is I'm gonna slide this in and that's it. And in a 30 seconds or so, that thing's gonna contract back and it's gonna form a um, bond here that is just won't leak, okay? So then let's say this is in, in the van and this is in a position. All I gotta do now is outside of the van, I can put this together. And what I do is if I have other things that I need to connect, I'll do everything outside of the van and then just bring the whole thing in and make the last connection. So this is a little piece, but it could have another elbow, it could have other fittings, it could branch off to a T, it could be anything like that that I could make on the table. And then when I'm ready to connect it into the van, let's just say this is coming up out of my water tank, then I just do the seven clicks on this one, and eight, somewhere in that range, and then I just put that on and there's my fitting. I really highly recommend this tool, even though it is a little bit pricey and might seem like kind of a luxury, but it's been an absolute game changer for us in building our plumbing systems. Now, I told you I'd give you a bonus tip for a tool that I use, keep in my pocket and use every day. It's called a Paulini pocket rule, and this is made by woodpeckers. If I needed to know how, what was this space right here? How long is this tab? I can just set it there I can loosen these up, I can slide that down, tighten it back up, and then I can look at it and say, okay, that is three quarters of an inch or about 18 millimeters. But I don't even have to know the, the length because if I wanted to now cut something that was exactly that size, I've got it measured there. Now I can just transfer that over onto my piece. And I know that if I cut on that line, that's gonna be the exact same width as that tongue that's sticking out. So I use this all the time. Now, if you're doing a van, truck, or RV upgrade or conversion, there's a lot of things to learn. Probably the two most intimidating parts of that build are the electrical and the plumbing systems. Um, we've got videos on our channel of, with overviews of how we do our electrical and how we do our plumbing. So you can tap or click the screen to watch those videos. We've also got a ton of other videos on the channel about van conversions, van life, product reviews. So consider subscribing and be sure to smash that like button and I'll see you in the next video. Jeff with Thrive Vans, Thrive On. See ya. These little, I would just reconnect the dust hose.